Hello, this is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Uh, today we wanted to show you another uh, graphic tool. Um, it's not as complex as GIMP, uh, but it is very easy to use, and to tell you the truth, it's very, very similar to Microsoft Paint program. Uh, in GIMP, uh, you can do a lot of really, really cool graphic editing, um, but where it falls flat is in simple um, drawing. Uh, capabilities. Uh, but um, this application called Color Paint, very, very much like Microsoft Paint, and very good for just doing very simple drawing of patterns. Uh, the way that you bring it up is you uh, go to the main menu, you would select Graphics, and indeed uh, select Color Paint with a K. When it launches, as you can see, it's very much like Microsoft uh, Paint. Um, you can uh, change the size of the drawing area. And as you notice, uh, there are certain areas on this uh, application. There are menus, there are uh, common uh, uh, buttons, uh, there are um, objects uh, that can be used uh, for various uh, painting. And down at the bottom, basically color selection. Um, I'm just going to give the basic uh, overview of some of these uh, uh, drawing um, uh, tools. Uh, for example, uh, one of the first ones I want to talk about is a line, so you can actually draw a line. Uh, if you notice uh, below, um, these are just indicators of the thickness of the particular line that you want. And if you notice down below, uh, this would in these two colors here in the two boxes would indicate uh, foreground color or lines um, and uh, background color. For example, if you were doing a rectangle, um, that would be the color that it would fill. But we are doing a line in this case. To do a line, you just simply click and drag, and here's a line. Uh, just like in Microsoft uh, Paint, if you hold down the shift key while draining, it makes a perfect straight or perfectly diagonal line, just as a matter of interest. Uh, for, on the other hand, if I wanted to, let's say, do a different color line, like a red, red one, then I would uh, um, select the color. Now, selecting the color for the foreground color is left click, and selecting the color for the background color is right click. So if I left click, you'll notice that the foreground color is now red, and if I draw my line, you'll see it as, as a red line. If I want a thicker line, I can select thicker line value, and here is my thicker line. Uh, on the other hand, I can select pencil. With pencil, you'll notice that there are no thickness uh, options that are available, but it's really just there to be able to draw freehand. So therefore, if I want this to be in blue or mauve, uh, then I just change the foreground color. If I want to make changes, I can click on to the eraser. Uh, the eraser has different eraser sizes. For example, if this is too large, then I can select a slightly smaller eraser head. Uh, just one uh, suggestion or tip. You can always go into view and zoom in. And in that way, if you have a smaller eraser head, you can do more minute editing. And then when you're finished, zoom out again just sort of as an FYI. Uh, the paintbrush here is for actual painting itself, uh, applying a brush. So if you notice the line is a little bit more thicker, it looks a little bit more like um, applying a brush. And there are different styles, like the you can do interesting edges. Uh, so different features here for different purposes. I won't talk about uh, fill, fill in until I've created an object that actually fills in, fills in the particular object. Uh, color eraser um, is kind of a unique uh, feature. I don't know if uh, Microsoft Paint has this, but it'll only erase the color um, that the foreground color is set to. So for example, it's erasing here, no problem. But if by mistake I go over here to a different color, it doesn't erase it. So this is probably for situations where you have lots of colors combined in. You don't want to muddle it up and it allows you to selectively uh, erase something without affecting the other colors. 
A spray can is just like spray paint and you can select the different uh, patterns for higher density. This is very much like in Microsoft Paint. Um, there are different things like uh, uh, doing ovals or rectangles, rounded rectangles. Um, these three uh, buttons here indicate what you want. Here is no fill, so if, so if, let's say I set my for, right, uh, left click to set my foreground color, and if I just click and drag, you'll notice that I'm creating a, um, a rounded rectangle without any fill colors. Uh, it's a pretty thick line here. Let me uh, select a slightly thinner line and do the same thing. And there we go. By holding on to the shift key while dragging, makes a perfect uh, square, rounded rectangle. Uh, on the other hand, if I click on here, it's no line, or it's a line, uh, color, but also a fill color. So for example, if I right click and set my fill color for sort of a turquoise, then if I click and drag, I have a black foreground or line, uh, yeah, a turquoise background color. Uh, square rectangle, same sort of idea if I want it, or like a, not a square rectangle, but a sharp rectangle, so an edge rectangle, as opposed to a rounded rectangle. Again, if I use the shift key, then I have a perfect square. Very, very much like Microsoft um, Paint. Here's Polygon, so I can click and drag and start to click to select my multi-sided object. Here would be a case then where I can go back to the paint and select and left click onto a color I want to use. So if I want to select a certain more of an orangish color and then click in, now I have the ability to um, make that change. Oval, same sort of idea. In this case, I'm going to show the third option, which is filling with no outline. So if I select this, it's just going to color with the, uh, with the background color. Let's say I'm going to select my right click to select my background color to yellow. If I click and drag, Oh, it's picking up the foreground color as, the, as, as what it is to fill in. So it's more of an option with this, this actual feature. A little confusing, but uh, after a while and you play around with it, you'll get the hang of it. Uh, a couple more things are to draw lines. That have fairly irregular shapes. And a way to draw a line and then take control of it to bend it and to make changes however you want. So there are a tremendous amount of options here. Really the last thing that I, uh, last few things I want to show is that you have a text feature so you can add in text for labeling. For example, I can start typing in text here and I can make changes uh, to the um, size and the style of my font. For example, if I want more of a comic sans and yes, and yes, there are um, Microsoft fonts on the system. So I'll say uh, this is text. Or if I want to, I, I should be able to change the uh, default color. have the ability before you, uh, you click outside of it to move it to where you want and then click and notice it is uh, yellow in the background because that's what I set my background color to be. Um, there are a couple of features where you can use a select tool, select this highlights it and you might have the ability then to move it wherever you want. Just be careful if you have the background color that it might remain. When it comes time to actually saving your work, you just go to File, Save save as. And you have many different uh, um, options here on which to save your image. Lots of different uh, file types. I'll just say a PNG image, which is called Portable Network Graphic, which is very common to have in uh, web pages. And I'll just say uh, my image. This is the ABIT department just wishing you happy volunteering and yet showing you another tool that you can use to help do graphics. Have a nice day!